So thank you so much for being here today. Can you introduce yourself with your name when you graduated from Trachtenberg and what you are doing now? Sure, sure. It is a pleasure to be here. I am Dr. Erica Walls. I graduated from the Trachtenberg School in 2019. I am currently the interim director of the Human Services and Social Justice Program, which is in sociology department at GW. I also own and lead a for-profit social enterprise called Inspire to Excel. Inspire to Excel is a career services firm that helps women to do good work. Excellent. Anytime mm -hmm. the word career services is in the answer, it gets gets Denise and, uh, and me pretty excited. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and launch into our five pretty quick questions, starting with what is the best networking advice you've received? The best networking advice I've ever received is to do it. <laughs> <laughs> So I will share with you, when I was um, a PhD student at Trachtenberg, um, I came to Denise and asked for help with finding a summer internship. And she, of course, helped me, but she also, um, you know, politely um, shared with me, you know, PhD students, you all study so, so much, but you got to get out there and network because um, here's a truth that I learned to be true when I graduated. You can have all the knowledge in the world. But if no one knows what your knowledge, skills, and abilities are, it will be uh, very difficult to secure a job that you really, really are passionate about. And you know that you are qualified to do. But with people um, knowing you, liking you, trusting you, you will have a much easier time um, connecting with a position that you really, really want. Music to my ears, of course. <laughs> uh, okay. And, you know, a lot of people really resist the networking for all different kinds of reasons. Mm -hmm. Super busy, super mm -hmm. nervous, introverted, which, sure. you, you know, network all different kinds of ways, right? Sure. There's not just one way to do it. Perfect. Okay. What specific action have you taken that significantly impacted any of your job searches? Um... Can you ask, could you repeat the question one more time, please? Sure. Some kind of a specific action, talking with a specific person, uh, some kind of a prep, going to some sort of events that you think impacted any of your job searches. I want to tell you a story that I love to tell my students because I advocate for networking 110%. I had zero interviews the entire time. I, I've been with GW 10 years. I've never had an interview. And I think I counted on my hand. I think I've held maybe five or six positions. The point is I went from being a researcher to a TA, to an adjunct professor, to a full-time visiting professor, to now interim director of this program, simply because people continue to see what I could do. And I was elevated to more and more responsibilities and really trusted to go to the next level and handle whatever was necessary. And people talk and somebody's in a meeting and has a need. And on my behalf, they would say, oh, I think Erica would be great. And that is what's happened since 2014. Wow. Wow. That's exciting. Wow. <laughs> That's really exciting. And I mean, to be able to, to not have to go through some of these grueling processes I, is so valuable. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. And I have been through that before. Um, those grueling processes. When I graduated, I actually was seeking um, full-time employment, doing a few different things. I remember I applied for a job as a uh, program evaluator, and I certainly had the skills to do that. Um, I think I went through five interviews, and the reason I didn't get it, the company was out in Rockville, and I didn't live close enough. <laughs> this was pre-pandemic, and they just felt that whoever they hired, for whatever reason, needed to live close in order to come to the office because I live in Alexandria. Not a lot I could do about that. So what are you going to do? Exactly. Not everything is the right fit and probably yeah. for the best. It's, it all somehow turns out for the best. It does. <laughs> um, what did you, well, so we were talking about interviewing and when you did do interviews, regardless of the outcome, what did you find helpful in prepping for them? Because if you made it through that many different rounds of interviews, then obviously interviewing was really good. H how do you prep for that? 
Sure. So um, I think that there are some questions that are pretty common for most interviewers. Um, they will certainly ask you, tell me about yourself. Yeah. And as I, you know, I teach students and I mentor many, many of them and I share with them. That does not mean tell me your whole life story. That is a question about self-awareness. It's a question about um, about uh, your skills and talents, what you bring to the table, your experiences as it relates to the role that you are applying to. So that's super important to understand that and to practice it and to be brief. The good news is, you know, um, students today have advantages I did not have at their age. You can Google the good responses to some of these things, but you still have to practice because they have to be natural and authentic and you and not cookie cutter. Yeah, and what they have now um, with ChatGPT <laughs> is the ability to generate lots and lots of potential questions that they can practice with. Um, maybe get some sample answers, but just like you said, you can't rely on any kind of um, AI or articles or anything to come up with the answer for you, but maybe get the thinking started in the in the direction that it needs to go, kind of jumpstart you a little bit. I could not agree more. I was working with a young lady earlier today on um, on resume and, you know, the question of, I'm not even sure what kind of jobs even apply for, um, but the first thing to do, of course, is an inventory of yourself. Who am I? Because just as a joke, we went to chat GPT and I typed in, you say you have great communication skills? Great. I typed in, what kind of jobs for great communication skills? 25 jobs came up. Everything from PR agent to librarian. I said, do you want to be a librarian? <laughs> she said, no. <laughs> so first know thyself, then use some of these tools to help you refine some roles that you might be interested in. Yeah, and it's going a little off the interview track, but I mean, think about students who come to us and say, I'll I'll take anything. I'm interested in anything. That is a tough road to go down because you certainly can't apply for everything. And you're going to have to talk to an employer at some point about why you're interested in that role, that organization. So come to career services and let us help you figure out, you know, a couple of different paths you might want to go down and see what happens. That's my my career services plug. Understood. Uh, understood. How did you showcase your dissertation to potential employee employers, or how have you used it in your career? Um, you know, through networking or through the work that you're doing. Sure. So I did specifically um, talk with an employer about my dissertation uh, results because a potential consulting role actually related very much to the research questions that I asked. Um, but beyond that, I wouldn't tell you, just completely the dissertation, just for me, was just such a confidence booster. And that I knew that um, I earned that. So it was not something that I use a lot in job talks and things like that, but um, it gave me the confidence that I earned it. And I knew that I could take on any challenge that came my way uh, because between that and the comprehensive exam, I mean, hey, I could, I could run a small country. <laughs> yes. Um, and I guess the dissertation experience, if you are going through some more of more of a conventional application and interview process. There are certain skills and experiences that you have that could be great in um, pieces of, if not whole answers to, I'm thinking different behavioral questions or questions in general about rising to challenges and meeting deadlines and dealing with competing needs and pushing yourself and those kinds of, those kinds of things, because it's certainly not an easy road. So seems like there's some fodder there for interview answers besides just what was the research on and what were your methods and the like? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, I hope it's okay if I share something personal. Um, in, let's say, March 2018, I delivered my dissertation proposal, which was successful. And the very next month, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. Wow. And I spent the rest of 2018 
being treated at GW Cancer Center right across the street from Whole Foods. And I was determined to finish my dissertation and I was fully supported by my um, entire dissertation team and the directors at Trachtenberg. They were beyond kind and supportive. And I will still say this, I produced one heck of a dissertation that was top-notch quality and I was able to deliver it um, at the end of January 2019 in remission and the rest is kind of history. Why do I share that? I share that because um, yes, dissertations are important and they're very tough, but they're perhaps not the toughest thing that we'll ever go through in life. And I think that sometimes we have to keep that in mind. And I was just determined that I was gonna remain organized, as organized and communicate with my uh, team as possible, no excuses and get it done. If I needed another week, then I spoke up and told them that. And I think we should just do that, period. You know, we go through all sorts of things in life. Right. Um, but we don't use these things as excuses either in order to, you know, for someone to feel sorry for us or uh, just to try to fall behind and just think that that's okay. Because that's not all right either. Um, but yeah, absolutely, completely blessed to do that solid work with fabulous colleagues here at GW to complete it. And now I'm still a GW um, staff member. How Well, faculty, excuse me. How wonderful. Great, right. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. And we are at GW. I've been here for 13 years. Very lucky that you are, that you are here at that going a little bit off track again, but I cannot think of how many times I've told students over these 13 years, communicate with your professors, let them yes. know what's going yes. on, be open because we can help you. We can work with you. We know that everybody has a life outside of school and Absolutely. want you to be successful. So it's clear that that is not just a talk, but also the walk of GW makes me proud to work here, which is terrific. Absolutely. Um, last question. What specific action have you taken that you think's been most impactful on your general career advancement? I mean, you talked about networking and maybe that is it, but as you've kind of progressed in different roles, have you been strategic about that? Has it kind of happened that way or any specific things that you've made sure you've done to continue to keep advancing? I think that the most valuable thing I've done is really take a step back and say, who am I? Mm -hmm. And I, I now actually have a mission that I've been on for a long time. And I finally articulated what that mission is. I am on a mission to educate, connect, and inspire 1 million women and girls toward excellence in my lifetime. Wow. And so I shared that with a group of students last week for the first time. And all they said was, what number are you on? <laughs> and I said, it's somewhere in the thousands, but you're part of it. Um, so, and I say that because I evaluate everything, every opportunity that comes my way through that lens. Okay. So it's very easy for me to say no to some things that might seem like a good thing to do because they don't align with my mission and who I am and what I'm going after. And no offense to boys and men. I have a father, a husband, two sons, and... <laughs> but oh, there you yeah. said I hear you <laughs> there you go but you know as a former girl and certainly as a woman um it is important to me to see us not just survive but to thrive and that is what I'm on a mission to do that's wonderful and I, you know as you're speaking obviously I'm excited that our students are part of that through this video and other connections um and also the talking about um things that align with you and what you yeah. want to do I think that goes both ways too. I know that organizations are looking for people to come on board who align with their values and their mission. And that's why I think it's, as you mentioned, so important to think about who are you and what do you want, where do you want your impact to be? And then being able to communicate that to potential employers who have the same interest and want their impact and yours through them, um, you know, to, to have that same kind of, the same kind of parameter. So I think it's great to 
think those things through. Hard for students sometimes to do, especially in the beginning mm -hmm. uh, when they first come on, but that's mm -hmm. a great thing to be. And you said it's taken you some time to kind of oh, formalize totally. that totally. and really, really sit with that. And the idea that these different roads that I've taken would all converge. I, I, I will say this, um, you know, I'm, I'm intelligent, but I, I lead with my heart for better or worse. And it's led me to where I am and it's good work. And what I mean is there's impact and I know it. I know it. I see the light bulbs. Um, I receive the feedback. Um, it's good work. Completely agree. And thank you so much for sharing your work and your personal mm -hmm. stories and your advice with our students who I think also really kind of lead with their hearts and have some really exciting opportunities to make an impact where they where they would like to do so. So thank you so, so much, Dr. Walls. Appreciate it. Thank you.